Hi everybody, I'm a counselor at the 180 Teen Center in Lodi. Let's be real, as much as we love the holiday season with all the smells and the food and the family and gift giving, it stresses us out. A season full of glorious fragrances and delicious baked goods could potentially be harmful for individuals that are really struggling and already struggling with mental health issues. Things like extra stressors, unrealistic expectations, or sentimental memories can trigger an episode of the holiday blues. Some people can be at risk of sadness, loneliness, fatigue, tension, sense of loss, disconnect, or even suicidal thoughts. There are things that can make us sad, things that can stir up anger or confusion or cause us grief. These are called triggers. Sometimes complex emotions just pop up out of nowhere and we're left trying to pick up the pieces or simply surviving the moment. Depression, anxiety, PTSD, and grief are just a few examples of mental health issues that can make it extremely difficult to cope during the holiday season. Even if we don't have a prior history of mental health, we can still be affected by the holiday blues. The holiday blues are a real thing. Okay, so maybe they're not diagnosable, maybe they're not found in the DSM, but it happens to a lot of people. The holiday blues are temporary, keyword temporary, feelings of sadness that last through the holidays, but they're typically seen most often in November and December, and they tend to go away after the first of the year. Even people who normally love the holidays and get excited about the decorations and traditions can find themselves feeling a little sad during this busy season. This season is full of high demands and high emotions, which can leave us feeling exhausted, overwhelmed, burnt out, and just stressed to our max. And it just sucks the jolly and the joy right out of us, to be honest. There are also natural things that can contribute to the holiday blues, like changing in the weather or less natural sunlight, less opportunity for exercises, changes in your diet or routine. These are all factors that can seriously affect your mood. So some signs of the holiday depression might include things like change in appetite or weight or sleep patterns, depressed or irritable mood, difficulty concentrating, feeling worthlessness or some guilt, feeling more stressed out or anxious, more worried, and also not really enjoying things that we like to do normally. Some signs that we may be feeling anxious include a racing heart or racing thoughts, maybe sweaty palms or feeling tense all over, feeling nauseous or like we have little butterflies in our stomach, even vomiting or having a full-blown panic attack. The most important thing to keep in mind is that these symptoms are temporary. They only last through the holiday season. They're also, say, milder than what we would see in something or someone diagnosed with clinical depression or an anxiety disorder. So if you're experiencing some feelings or having some thoughts that typically aren't there, or your emotions are higher or worse than they normally are, here are some things that you can do to help. Number one, Stop and try to put words on how you're feeling. I'm feeling anxious right now, or I'm feeling really sad or overwhelmed. Being able to label our emotions is the first step to being able to implement a plan or strategy to help manage them. Once you've identified your emotion, then find something that makes you feel better. I know it sounds really simple and kind of common sense, but the reality is when our emotions start to take over and they get really, really high, common sense goes right out the window. Coping skills are things that help us calm down. There are hundreds, if not thousands of coping skills and everyone has different ways to cope. But if we can have just five to seven coping skills that are in our mental toolbox that we can pull at any time, then we'll have things that'll make us feel better when our emotions start to get really high. So try going for a walk or going outside and playing with the dog. Um, maybe drawing a picture or doing a puzzle, talking to a friend or a trusted loved one, finding a support person. These are things that we can try and see if they help us feel better. Number three, seek support. Find a safe person for you to talk to about your feelings. Let them know, hey, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed or a little anxious. It's so important for us to know that we have someone that we can trust when we're going through a difficult time. And sometimes just knowing that we have someone can really help us feel better in those moments. 
Number four, find out what makes you upset. We call these triggers. What situation or person, perhaps, can make you feel triggered, can make you feel anxious or sad or angry? If we know what our triggers are, then we can create a plan or strategy to help deal with them. So we know when to implement our coping skills and when to pull out our five things that help us feel better. Number five, find a neutral place in your mind to go, or a happy place as I like to call it. This space can be a happy memory or a happy picture. Maybe it can be something that makes you smile or just brings you joy. It doesn't have to be something like that. It can also be something really neutral. Something such as folding the laundry or going through your morning routine. The whole point of finding a neutral or happy place is to change that emotion. Our brain is very, very powerful. And if we simply think of something that makes us happy or makes us not feel upset, our brain can start to change that emotion that we're feeling. And number six, positive self-talk. Let me say this one more time for the person in the back, positive self-talk. What we are, what we think. Be kind to yourself when you're experiencing emotions that may be overwhelming. It is super important for us to be patient with ourselves and to give ourselves some grace, especially during the time like the holidays when the demands and expectations are so high. I don't really think we do this enough even when it's not the holiday season. We are so quick to judge ourselves and judge our emotions, judge what we're thinking and how we're feeling, and most of the time we judge ourselves negatively, which makes us less likely to actually work through them and to work through those hard emotions. And number seven, if these tips and tricks that we talked about just now are not enough and you still feel like you're having suicidal thoughts, then please tell someone. When those emotions take over and it's really hard to think of anything else or it's really hard to think of anything positive going on, it's hard to even imagine those thoughts passing, but eventually the intensity of those thoughts will peak and they will come down and you will be able to think clearly again. Here are some resources that can help you if you can't talk to your support person or find yourself alone in that moment with those really dark thoughts. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline is a great resource. They are open 24-7 and they have crisis clinicians on staff that can help you when those emotions get really, really high. When those thoughts of suicide creep in and we think there's no way else out and nothing else that we can do about it, please reach out to them. Either call them or simply text them and you can have access to a clinician via text. If you still feel like you can't keep yourself safe, and the crisis clinicians still feel like you can't keep yourself safe, an emergency room is fully capable of managing any mental health emergency or crisis. So please tell someone and get to your nearest emergency room. They also are fully staffed with emergency clinicians to help talk you through this 24 seven. Okay parents, this one's for you. This is how you can help your child or maybe even yourself survive the holiday season. Number one, Keep a routine as much as possible. Daily activities, exercise, eating, sleep routines, all routines are good. As we talk about sleep, make sure your child's getting enough sleep. So number two, sleep patterns are is super important. Research shows that developing teenage brains need about nine and a half hours of sleep per night. That's a lot of sleep. Sleep habits are so important and keeping good ones going during the holiday season, during the hustle and bustle would be a great thing. Number three, exercise. Take your child outside for a walk. Maybe go to a park, go walk your dog, do something outside as much as you possibly can. It's going to help keep the brain even. Attending parties and going shopping at all hours of the night can be fun, but doing too much in such a short period of time can be overwhelming. Pace yourselves. Number five, talk to your child. Ask them, how are you feeling? What are some of the things that you do that help you feel better? How can I help? How can I notice that you're starting to feel overwhelmed? Talking to your child is the best way to learn about how you can help them. Be their trusted support start to notice a change in mood and a change in behavior, help them by implementing a coping skill. Number six, 
Remember, for most, the holiday blues won't last too long. If you notice a significant change in behavior or a significant change of mood, then call their doctor, call a therapist, make a referral. Maybe there's something else to it. Maybe there's something else going on. So I hope these tips and tricks help you survive the holiday season. Remember, if you think you're struggling with the holiday blues or depression or any other mental health condition, please something to a trusted person so you can get the resources you may need. Happy holiday season, everyone.